Hi, my name is Laquandra Hudson, and I attended two meetings with Rico and Clayton. My contact employer was Debbie Gurner. That's what she goes by. Her name is Deborah, though. But she's the instructional assistant for the high school program, and she's also on the committee for the 70th anniversary. When I first met her, she was really nice, and she seemed really helpful. We went to both of our meetings on the same day, and one of the meetings that I went to was the high school job shadow and the 70th anniversary decommissioning of Building 18. That's the demolition ceremony. At the high school job shadow, it was really educational for not only the high school students, but for me as well. Because I feel like as when I was in high school, we didn't have any of that stuff. We didn't have you know, mentors and everything to go to colleges and visit. So I think that's really educational for high school students. Every week, I think about two times a week, they have different high school students that come from different high schools to come visit the program that they want to go to. So what we did, we all met in the cafeteria and we took them to the programs that they were interested in and we dropped them off. I thought that it could have been a little bit more educational for us as well to kind of sit in on it and kind of evaluate what they learned for an hour or so because I felt like we just dropped them off and we didn't kind of learn anything from what they had sat in and saw in each program. At the ceremony, I thought that it was really, it was really educational for me and it's something that I usually don't get to go to so I think this class kind of helped me go to more student involvement projects that I usually wouldn't do. I liked the, all the speeches, I mean I, I liked the meetings that I went to because they were educational, interesting and it was a good experience. At both of the meetings, I learned things about the school that I didn't know, like Building 18 is getting torn down. I didn't even know that until she brought it to my attention. And we, there were six speakers that were there. The first speaker, his name was Maury Foss. He's the former vice president of the school. He's actually retired now. But I feel like he set a really good mood for the whole ceremony because he was the first speaker. He talked a lot about Building 18 and what it meant to the past students who had been here and just how from then and what it is now, the school, like how we have more funding now, and then back then when he went to school, they didn't have barely any funding. So these are different pictures from the ceremony. One of these pictures is just from inside the building 18 that they got, they kind of tore out of the building. And these are just different pictures. If you go outside of building 19 and 16 and inside building 23, there's different showcases that show the 70th anniversary like how far Clover Park College has come since then. These are more pictures that I got. You can go visit them, it's right, it's on campus. But. Not only were they educational, but they were very interesting. I didn't know the Building 18 when it first started. It started as the aviation program and then it moved into like many other programs, like there was the welding program was there, the machine program, the, there was a food processor program, there was water treatment program, there was a heating and air conditioning. So all the programs that were there either moved to different buildings or they just got rid of them period over the years. So I thought that was pretty interesting to know. Not only was it interesting, but the last reason I liked it because it was a good experience for me. Usually when I come to school, I just go to my classes and leave. I don't, I haven't really visited any parts of the school. This is my second quarter. So I kind of just go to class and then leave. So I thought this was a really good opportunity for me to see more. And when we were on the tour, we actually went through a couple buildings instead of walking across the whole campus. So I kind of actually seen inside the buildings uh, that I didn't see before. Like I didn't know that they had like a graphic design actual building. I didn't see any of that. So I've seen a lot more interesting things that I didn't see before. And at the ceremony, I just learned a lot more about the school that I that I knew of. Like, one of the guys who spoke, he was Glenn Spieth. He was just a representative from the Lakewood Historical Society. I'll pass this around. And he mostly just talked about, he didn't talk about building 18 because he thought that Maury Foss had kind of like, you know, set the ground for that. And everybody kind of agreed that it was just time for building 18 to just go because it was old and it wasn't, it was taking up space. But he kind of went, back in time and kind of explain, you know, that before all this was here, in 1853, the first railroad came through here and he talked more about like, there was a speedway, the whole track went through here, it was five miles. So he talked more about what was here before the school actually got built and what it is now. So I thought that that was really interesting. 
but it really just gave me a chance to see outside of the box from my comfort zone. I'm usually not comfortable going to meetings and everything, but I was comfortable. I'm going to cite my readings from the book Speak Without Fear. Our six dreadly fears are fear of criticism or being judged, fear of forgetting, fear of embarrassment or humiliation, fear of failure or success, Fear of the unknown and fear of bad experiences are emotional. My second readings is from Give Your Speech, Change the World. Remember, the only reason to give a speech is to change the world. Effective speeches move their audiences to action. Effective speakers listen to their audience. Charisma comes from the ability to be emotionally expressive. To deliver a successful speech, find kinesthetic connections with the audience. For my last readings, is from Successful Presentations for Dummies. The 10 biggest mistakes presenters make are starting with an inappropriate joke, going too long, using poor visual aids, not rehearsing with the visual aids, ignoring audience interest, faking it, looking at notes instead of the audience, trying to be something you're not, not practicing out loud, and forgetting to check the room. <coughs> so with that, the meetings that I attended were educational, interesting, and a good experience for myself. So now I'll pass it on to Rico. <coughs> oh. <laughs> this project was different than I had expected. I attended two meetings with Debbie Gurner. Uh, one was taking high school students around campus and dropping them off at different programs they were interested in. Uh, we didn't speak much. I uh, didn't learn much from anybody. Uh, we we got to talk with her a little bit, and it was real similar, not formal at all. Uh, the second one was a decommission ceremony for Building 18, where we got to hear multiple speakers. Uh, I will go over their orientation of the ceremony, the speakers themselves, and their all, overall perception of the meeting. The orientation of the ceremony, it was semi-formal. Everybody was kind of dressed down, but the people that were speaking were dressed real nice. They carried themselves real well. There was 30, 40 attendees, which kind of looked like a big crowd. It wasn't very big, though. It was just a small room. It started promptly at 1 o'clock. Uh, real fast-paced. There wasn't much downtime. Most people were sitting down. Some were standing, others were taking pictures. <coughs> the speakers were in the crowd. There were five speakers we listened to, which all transitioned uh, to the others real well. Put over the history and memories of the plans and the plans for campus. You guys already seen it, but. The speakers we had, there's five one, five different speakers. Dr. John Wallstrom, he was well dressed and he welcomed the audience and kind of set the pace for all the other speakers. Um, he was an okay speaker, he used a few ums. He was trying to just get it going to look like. He used his time well. And then we got into the actual speakers for the ceremony, which was Maury Foss started it off. He spoke of the staff memories of Building 18. A lot of them focused on how cold it was. It must have been pretty cold. Uh, he was well dressed and he used his, and he's very well spoken. He used his time well and he transitioned to the next speaker very well. <clears throat> Stephen, Stephen Kearns spoke after him and he talked to us. Uh, uh, the students' memories of Building 18. I kind of identified with him because he was in the machinist program, and he spoke. He spoke well. He used a few ums and likes. But uh, my favorite part of his presentation was uh, when he was talking about uh, when they take the building down, look for look for a one two three block inside the wall. One two three block is a small metal block that you make in shop class, and you make a couple different uh, two of them and they bolt together and hold your project in machines. Well, he was doing some surface grinding on an old machine we got in there. And uh, this thing's been around as long as the college has. It was on uh, aircraft carriers back in World War II. 
Uh, it's in there. He was, it was kind of funny because he used it and we just broke it. But anyway, uh, he was doing some surface grinding and the magnet lost power to it and it shot his project across the room probably probably about 200 miles an hour. <laughs> well, it embedded itself in the wall and they, they could never find it. They looked for it like, <laughs> all semester and they couldn't find out where it was. So I thought that was, that was kind of funny. Is this a story I kind of picked up on. Uh, Glenn Spythe was the next speaker. He spoke of the history of CP. Uh, he was kind of long in the wind and more, he was more factual about all the events and what the what the school was about. It started off as a, a, rail, a railway, um, turned into a racetrack, different kind of school. Um, he was a little underdressed. He was probably the most informal dressed. Uh, he was just a little long in the tooth for me. I actually started kind of dying out while he was doing it. I mean, he, he had interesting facts, but he just wasn't as well spoken as the others. My overall perception of the whole ceremony is it flowed well. Uh, it was real well put together. They used their time well. Um, the length was perfect. It wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. I mean, it was a memory for a building. You know what I'm saying? It's, they can only go so far with it. <laughs> but uh, it was a comfortable, semi-formal atmosphere. Uh, they were accommodating for students and faculty alike. Everybody was comfortable. You know, there were students sitting next to the deans and everything else. It was, it was nice. It ended with uh, some questions for everybody, which kind of brought everybody into the thing. It ended with, they asked anybody if they had any questions for any of the speakers. And of course, then they, then they had, after that was uh, beverages and all that kind of stuff. So they got to sit and kind of talk with everybody informally, which kind of added a nice little twist on it. This was a well put together ceremony. I've gone over <coughs> the orientation of the ceremony for Building 18, the speakers that made the ceremony what it was, and of course, their overall perception of what I witnessed. I'm glad I had a chance to attend this with my partners and my uh, faculty member. Thank you. Helping citizens who have no seals in the job field be more educated about the trades they wish to be part of. Okay, cool. In my time today, I would like to show you the, um, what I've learned at the meeting I attended with my contact, Debbie Garner. And that is why Phil Park, past, present, and future are so important to this establishment. This um, <coughs> is a picture of Building 18. Mm -hmm. The history, the history of um, okay, um, the, the history. Let me see. In 1873, the, the first railroad it ran through um, Tacoma. 1912, the Tacoma Speedway, first uh, five-mile race. In 1921, the grandstand burned down. 1922, um, the robber robbed the grandstand and took all received sending grandstand into um, bankruptcy. The building 18 was the first building um, before it held school class. It was a depot for the U.S. Navy. Let's see that. As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. Uh, President. The old buildings are being taken down, so, so the new, the new one could um, come up. You see, um, there's a history of the, um, the menu of the um, school, different. Here's a present. They're building. 